Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another workshop in the Cybersecurity Cybertruck Workshop Series Edition. And today we'll be covering DOM clobbering. So, um, a quick disclaimer the following video may or may not have tools containing or contain tools and techniques used by hackers to penetrate and infect computer systems, servers, and personal mobile devices. The purpose of these videos is to demonstrate how these attacks work so that you can protect yourself from them. Also to raise awareness of important cybersecurity issues in today's world. Techniques and tools learned from this video should only be performed on systems you have explicit permission to do so. UC Merced, Q Project, Tag Equation, nor the presenter and all of my affiliates are not responsible for any malicious use of this information. So we're going to start off with what is DOM. Um, there are classic HTML and attribute elements and attributes that you guys probably pl play around with when creating a website. And DOM stands for document object model. And there are different types of DOMs. Um, for example, um, there's an HTML DOM, there's an XML DOM, and uh, what the HTML DOM defines is that the HTML elements are can be treated as objects. The um, DOM defines the properties of all these HTML elements, and it, it gives you methods to access all the HTML elements, as well as any all the events for the HTML elements. For example, if you've been using JavaScript. Uh, uh, with HTML, you probably use something called document dot get element by ID or get elements by ID stuff like that. So that's HTML DOM. It takes all the your HTML code and translate it into objects. And why you would want to do this is because, for example, if you want to manipulate manipulate the HTML and create something like a dynamic HTML. For example, you want to add um, table elements when the user enters a input in a form. Um, here's a quick example. Um, so a quick um, diagram. So you have this DOM over here on the left, and then you got the document, and then you got the root element, which is HTML, then element, um, different elements and then within there is text and so how you would refer to this in pseudocode would be document dot root element dot head dot title dot text and you get my title um, if you type this in um, document dot all document dot all is um, all the HTML elements and then that's in an array so you can call like the second um, element or I think the third yeah third element in the array and then you can do dot source for example this um, element that I was calling was a script source tag or a script tag and had a source attribute so you could so what document dot all um, bracket two did was grab that script element and then dot source referred to that specific attribute and it gave me back an HTML or it gave me back a URL. Another one popular one is document.cookie. So that would, um, just prints out all the cookies you have for your specific um, website. So now we're gonna move on to DOM clobbering. So what is DOM clobbering? It's a technique used to inject HTML onto the client side. You, um, you, it's meant to manipulate the DOM in order to change the behavior of JavaScript code for example, you can overwrite any JavaScript object that's inside the actual client. Oh, that's actually inside the script tag. Um, now, here's an example use case. For example, let's have let's see let's say we have this script right here. Um, when it starts on, um, it's going to ask the it's going to get the object from window dot some object. This is from the DOM. And then you have this or simple or of just an empty object. And then you're gonna create the element script. And then you're gonna set script.source into the URL from the object that you just got. 
and then you're gonna append it to the document. So in this case, what we would do is send or write this in the HTML. So have a A anchor with ID equals some object, have another one, I, A ID equals some object with the name URL, and then you can have it, you can send it a link for some malicious script that you would want to run. Um, the multiple anchors, A anchors, causes the DOM group to group them into a DOM collection. And that's why um, you're able to get an object from the window.sum object. We'll be trying this out a little bit later. So to um, avoid this, what many sites use is HTML filters. Um, this is done on the client side. Everything here is done on the client side. Um, for example, you could do DOM purify that sanitize. DOM purify that sanitize is pretty good, but however, there's some other filters that are implemented in production that are not very good. And that's why DOM clobbering still exists today. So how do we um, work with DOM, how do we DOM clobber with HTML filters? So um, clobbering the attributes property in the document enables you to bypass client side filters. Um, the filters would miss your script or your um, property if the property is clustered in a whitelisted DOM node. For example, the form tag is, or anything inside the form tag is often not filtered out because it's a special um, whitelisted DOM node. And so when you have, that's why you're able to put the input as ID attributes inside, plus um, the on click would get executed. That's because um, for some basic HTML filters, how their logic works is they have a for loop that checks on elements.attributes.length. But since the attributes.length is undefined because of this input ID right here, the filter regards that on click and just moves on because how do you go from one for loop from or for loop from index zero to attributes dot length, which is undefined, zero to undefined? You basically just skip that. And that's why we're able to dom, clobber the DOM with um, basic HTML filters in place. Now I'm going to do a quick demo. Let me share my screen. Uh, you guys can see this, right? Yeah. Okay. So um, what we're going to do here is basically, um, this is a hands-on demo, so feel free to start typing up alongside me. So let me close all this, these tabs. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna simulate the actual DOM clobbering in real time. So um, hoping you guys have all this typed out. I'm going to start. So let's start with the simple form. Um, and we're gonna take out this action and we're gonna set the ID equals X. All right, let's start with the script tag. So we know what we have to build in the HTML. So we have the script. You just want to alert x dot y dot z uh, dot value. Now inside here, we want to put output. Let's, uh, let's define, let's put, use a HTML one call output. We'll set the ID equal to y. And now let's put a value. What do you guys want to say? I love the Q project. 
Are you guys good? Yeah, you guys are following along? Oh, uh, yeah, I think so. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to... share my entire screen now so I can show you on the desktop. Oh, so um, I, I'm using WebStorm, but if you guys can use is just copy and paste the path, full path onto your browser, but I'm gonna use the built-in browser right here. And as you can see that it alerts, I love the cube project because of Dom clobbering. Now let's do another one. Let's do, let me go back to my web store. Now let's, let's say if you want to alert, um, or if you do a simple X, Y, Z. And now we have the form, but instead we're going to use the input tag. Um, we can use set the name of the form to y. So x dot y is a form, and then we call on to the input value, which is z. And let's see this. Okay, well, let's see if this works. Shoot. Never mind. Uh, we'll just go to the other one. So, if you want to alert X, we'll find, we need some sort of X object. Instead of using form, since we already talked about form, let's use. Um, Okay, just a regular anchor body. Um, we'll say ABC. We can you put like um, a uh, URL components here, and let's set this ID equal to X. Now let's try this out. Let me share my entire screen. And you can see that it prints out the entire URL of href. So it doesn't strip down the URL encoding or it doesn't encode the URL even more. Now, let me go back to the slides. So that was our first demo. Um, how do you defend yourself against these tags? So first, you basically want to do a couple of things. You want to check the attributes of the object to make sure that they're, they are what they are or what they are supposed to be instead of HTML elements. You want to avoid the use of the logical or operator in JS in conjunction with um, all any global variables. And you also want to use dom purify dot sanitize input dot value. So let's let's demo this too. So let me pull that up. So first we have to include a script tag for the um, dom purify script. Um, I have the script right here in purify.min.js, but you can usually find it on GitHub. Um, source equals min.js. Okay, now 
with this alert X. Instead, I'm going to use dom dot p dom purify dot sanitize x. Now let's put this in our thing, our web browser, and see what it looks like. So I'll click on this button right here. And you can see that it prints out the element right here, but what does it not print out? Can anyone tell me? What uh, did Dom href? What? Yeah, it didn't print out the href. So it's um, a bit more safe in terms, like it didn't call onto your special object. So now, I'm going to go back to the that over here. Um, this is my work cited. And I hope you guys had a good time. Um, just a quick thing I wanted to mention was that why DOM clobbering is a big issue is that sometimes you can clobble or you can clobber the DOM with get values. Like for example, um, let me actually share a CTF I had or a, a portion of the CTF I had. Um, so you see here, this is basic PHP. They have a um, variable in the, a query, a parameter variable in the URL called theme. And so the objective or one thing I, we were able to do is that uh, because of the poor, poorly implemented logic here, we can set um, the website to website.com slash um, theme equals, instead of doing dark or light, what we can do is actually type in something like this, where if we put theme right here, it will just substitute this. We could have script tags here. You can also have a ID equals this, this. So basically we were able to inject the DOM or inject HTML using DOM clobbering for this particular solution. So let's say for a real website, there was some, I don't know, maybe um, username or password or even document.cookie. You, what you could do is in the email, when you send a malicious email, in that um, link, when they click on it, it would be able to use DOM clobbering to take your cookie and send it to the attacker or take the username, password, wherever the user inputs and send it off to um, like wherever, because you're able to capture that input because of HTML um, clobbering. Or and that would clobbering. happen, that would happen just by them clicking the link? Yeah. There would have to be a vulnerability though of DOM clobbering when parsing the um, query values. Oh, okay. Of course, that's just what get links, get um, posts, or get um, HTTP requests. But if you have a button on a website, you can make any kind of request, like post request or anything like that. And that just opens the world or opens everything to even more vulnerabilities that can be exploited. So uh, I wanna thank you guys for coming to my workshop. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. No questions, okay. Um, thank you for coming and join us next time. Uh, please like and subscribe.